we'll it's either record on my computer or record in the cloud. Okay. Um, the next section would be public comment, of which we have no other attendees. So we can move on, I believe, to the next agenda item, which is a CPAC update, which I'm curious because I haven't heard much. And thank you oh, really? on that, Sarah. Yeah. Oh, well, the <laughs> LSSE's request for $25,000 for pre-development studies to support grant applications was approved by the committee and approved by council. So that's that's done. That's a done deal. All right. So that was the contingency fund. Right. Everybody familiar <laughs> with what that was for? Okay, good. So that's good. And by council. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. And that was the that was the only uh, proposal this year. So do you have any updates? I'm just curious mm -hmm. on what what else was uh, whether any I know that there there was something that was controversial. Isn't it interesting? We oh yes. We well, <laughs> you really want okay. Oh the shirt. Um, Sorry. Let's see. I can it is a seems like a long time ago now. Um, well, many requests were approved or recommended by the committee, if not for the full amount. Um, but then there was a request from the Jones Library for funds to support construction of this of a special collections department and infrastructure within the renovated or new or new slash renovated building, but it would be contingent, of course, on that project proceeding. Um, and our initial, I think, just about unanimous vote was to uh, recommend um, bonding a significant amount of money for that purpose. And then COVID stroke struck and then a lot of some people started having second thoughts about the specifics of the proposal and whether it was really permissible actually i guess we had started this debate just before uh the shutdown um and there was a lot of back and forth about whether the proposal met the definitions of historic preservations and the town asked its legal counsel and then there was other so there was a big hoo-ha about that. <laughs> um, and in the end, first of all, council didn't really want to hear about it because first of all, it was bonding and there was no hurry because there was no project, there was no library grant yet receipt offered or a council <laughs> vote to proceed. So it was like, there was no hurry about it. Um, but then uh, the vote was rescinded, actually, and um, the committee asked the Jones or encouraged the Jones to come back with a new proposal that was uh, unambiguously compliant with the historic preservation requirements. Wow. And that's and that's where it is. Okay, let's see. What but all answer. but all of our cash. Oh, Awards, so to speak, were approved. Were approved by council. Okay. See, I knew we'd get the inside scoops there. Thanks. Right. Well, <laughs> it's all on public record. You can go watch the tapes. <laughs> no, I, that it, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, I did hear, you know, mostly through the news and and so forth. But yeah, um, yeah, that they. I should and I should add just because Nate Buddington, who was chair, was mm -hmm. on LSSE for for so long, he stepped down. Um, from the committee because he and his family are moving to Williamstown. So right, huh? Yeah, I don't maybe gone. I don't know. Yeah, I Big saw him yesterday, and he's leaving next week. Oh, oh. do you know? Is does he have a? Uh, may, or does anyone know if, about his forwarding email address or his personal email address? Other than I know he has a town one. He, I know I have it. I know his personal address. I can send it to oh, you. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. And send him a note. He's done so much, I mean, for LSSC and the the town as a whole. You know, okay. it's just been just great. 
So we wish him well and we will miss him, that's for sure. He was a big advocate for LSSC, especially nice. in CPAC. So you have some big shoes to fill, Sarah. Well, <laughs> you're, you're a great advocate too. Okay. Well, he was, so un, until he stepped down, he was, the, was one of the at-large members, mm -hmm. right? So the town manager will need to somehow find someone to replace him. Yeah, so we were have in historically been very fortunate, and we've had great representation on the on CPAC. Uh, so if, you know, if any of you are interested, I you know we should start lobbying now um, to get us another you know LSSC another spot on that uh, committee because it's a it's an important one and it's very powerful. <laughs> and it's very interesting interesting uh, work. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, it tremendously. The group works really well together and it's it's been fascinating. It's hmm. rewarding. I'll do it. All right. That's good to know. I, I think what I'll do then is um I'll make the town manager aware that you're interested in that, Becky, and um I'll talk to you uh, um sometime within the next week or so just to see. I think we just have to put I, I would hate for another you know, I know their 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 issues. As uh, I'm going to be very diplomatic here, um, but they're important too. But I think it's important for our issues to be in the forefront as well. But, so um, I will I'll talk to the town manager, and then I'll I'll be in contact with you, Becky. I did shoot him an e email asking what the process or the timeline would be, and I have not heard back, which is fine because you know what's the hurry, but. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Me too. All right. Um, so that uh, any any more questions about CPAC? All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about the strategic plan. I'm interested to hear your comments, uh, concerns, questions. It's it is the this is the if you will the final draft. Um, for, uh, plan. I thought she did. It's pretty. It seems very comprehensive. Uh, as I, I reread it again tonight, just to make sure T's were crossed, I's were dot, I's were dotted, all that good stuff. But uh, you know, I think the key is now going to be in the the phase that is the um, completing the program plan, which is you know at some point. Then I think we you know, in, in terms of what our role will be is making sure our priorities are all in the same, are all, you know, all the same, I guess. I mean, I think it's seemed clear to me that the name change pops up as wanting, as, as people wanting for that to happen in the fall, um, which is, um, I think, doable. And um, you should know, too, that there, there's a high possibility that we may be moving locations, our physical location back to the bank center. Ooh. So um, so that might be a good opportunity for this to happen, sort of to have it coincide with that. Uh, the town manager has expressed uh, a desire to have us more in the forefront, not, you know, kind of off outside of downtown, but to really have all the town services uh, together in a, in a place that is more visible. So uh, the big brothers and big sisters will be moving, I, what I've been told will be um, moving out in leave somewhere in mid-September, which probably leaves us a couple of months for probably October, November, where we'll be moving in to um, the most likely the third floor space, but I'm not, that hasn't been confirmed yet. But regardless, we'll be there. I think it'll be good. Um, all of community services will be in one location again. Um, and the school needs, basically, there's another uh, motivation for this, is that the, the school is looking for, for room as well. So um, so where we go? We're, we're, welcome back, Kata. <laughs> we're coming back to the bank center. So uh, we'll, I'll keep you posted on that. So I think that actually works as I go back, you know, just from what I said before, though, that works pretty well with, with the name change, um, possibly a new logo, probably not doing a fall paper brochure, but we'll be doing some sort of a flyer to uh, 
um, educate people as to where they can go to access our programs and registrations. Um, so, it, um, so that's good. Um, so other comments, now your comments about the strategic plan in general. Well, I have a couple things. Mm -hmm. I could say a couple things. Sure, please. Um, if if there's any if, if there are any other more significant edits than this little one I have, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't re redo the whole thing just for this. But I I, <laughs> I think it's page three, like the introduction. Um, and the top half is about LSSE and the bottom half is about the Donahue Institute. And just the last sentence of the paragraph about LSSE refers to the um, theater productions. It just says it is staged extravagant productions. And to me, extravagant means mm. you've wasted money. You spent too much, <laughs> like over the top unnecessarily. Mm. So. Ugh, I, I would just strike that word. Maybe elaborate. I was it just going to say it's that. A top quality productions. Why not yeah. just give yeah. it at that? Take you know? it back. I, I, you but know, yeah, minor. It's coming from a mother, you know, Sharon has son when he was younger, quite younger, but he, he had many roles um, as a, you know, an actor in, in this. So she's probably very proud. <laughs> just, oh, I'm sure. I <laughs> could just see that. But we can certainly, um, I can certainly have her take it off. I agree with you too, that that's probably not the best thing you want to have in the forefront. Like, yeah, <laughs> it appears like, whoa, <laughs> how much did it cost? <laughs> right. Well, it everybody, you know, feels they're smarter than everybody else, so. <laughs> All right, and anything else? Sarah, did you? Yes, I had a comment on page six, the bullet, and, I, and, and I'm not making a, I'm, I'm making a different point than what I've said before, oh. the coordination of local sports and recreation opportunities. Mm -hmm. It says to have LSSE uh, be a point of entry for all local sports activities. To me, that just sounded too broad. I mean, there are for-profit maybe you don't consider these sports, but Hampshire gymnastics, you know, are you mm. really, would we try, I understand the nonprofit mm -hmm. sports leagues, but there are also for profit business, you know, for profit businesses that I don't think it would be our role. So if that's, if it's correct to say non, non for profit, I, I would do that. Okay, that, that would make sense. Um, just as a point of information, um, Hampshire Gymnastics is closed um, and it won't reopen until oh. after a vaccine is prevalent. That's too well, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, that's just an aside. Yeah. But I think nonprofit inserted there instead of all. Does it, do people agree with that? Yes. And I also thought um, our intent was with youth sports and not adult sports leagues. Uh -huh. um, that was my note on that. All right, that's a good, good point too. Not trying to take over Hampshire Athletic Club, right? No. Oh my God. <laughs> Anything else? Well, then I hope I hope we'll have a conversation about the last section. I think section six, the one about the planning program or program planning. That it all struck me as new and. Maybe I just forgot about it, but I wanted yeah, to. I just was a little, I'm kind of surprised. And I don't know if Sharon will, expects to be a part of that or um, how that, how she wants to proceed. So I still myself need more guidance on that as well on the next steps. Oh, actually, I, miss, I misspoke. I do have questions about the, the annual pl planning thing, but section six is called fund development and sustainability so what page is that i'm sorry no it's no i guess I, I i said it right the first time page 16. Mm -hmm. yeah the fund development and sustain it was a little opaque i mean this is really developing funding sources and sponsors and stuff like that right 
So are you talking about an, uh, develop an annual fund development? Well, then under item B on that mm -hmm. section, item B, the first bullet, refers to complete the annual program plan. And I didn't recall having heard about an annual program plan, so I was puzzled by that, but it seems to be discussed in the next page. Right. So, so it was just confusing. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is, is just, um, then what are we gonna do in the first year kind of thing? And I think my understanding was that the, the plan is where we could go next, right? So the strategic plan was, this is what we wanna do, and then now we have to come up with a working plan and pick and choose what's, you know, the order of how we can tackle some of these things. Yep. I agree, and I think so what will probably happen is we'll schedule a meeting with another one of these with, with the staff and uh, the commission, and then we'll prioritize what we're gonna do this first year. So let me make a note of that. Would it be appropriate to invite friends of Amherst Recreation, since it's talking about development kind of things, like mm -hmm. to invite them to speak at that meeting? What do you think, Yusuf? You're the president. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's too premature, like right <laughs> now. You know what I mean? I think let's decide. Let's let's look at all these things and say, okay, this is year one, year two, year three. Maybe break them down and then figure out what where like the funding fundraising would need to go in and then bring them in. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I think let's see what we want to do first before we kind of get other people involved. That's my gut. No, I think that's good. You'll have to excuse me. I'm kind of jotting down uh, notes. You're going to contact her to to ask how to proceed with a fund development plan because I agree I've, I'm kind of lost that at this point like how do we proceed with that how do we are they going to lead us is that the next step how to develop a fund development plan because part, yeah. part six was not I think it was barely talked about it was kind of like the last you know, how do we create funding? And that, and it was just left at that kind of. You know, I think we can, I don't know if they need to come in. I think that there is, um, we could probably have someone do that pro bono to help us with the fund development plan. Okay. Um, I wouldn't um, bring them Thank in again. And that's just one of the kind of the objective or the, um, the goals. Okay, so then what I'm hearing is the next step is for me to schedule a meeting of staff and commission again, bring everyone together and at least let's map out the first year of where we're gonna go and have a timeline. Does that make sense? Well, did anyone else have Yeah, comments? did anyone else have comments? Right, thanks Sarah. No, I, I think they did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> did I miss? Is someone talking? I'm sorry. No, we said it looked good. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, just a little bit of a lag, I think, here. We've got Jill's on a, <laughs> another Zoom meeting, so I'm hoping our bandwidth <laughs> holds out <laughs> between two of us here. Okay. Um, all right. So if there aren't any more comments on that, we'll move to the director's report. Could I, could I just say, if we didn't already convey our thanks to the Donahue Institute, I thought it was, I mean, it seems like it started a hundred years ago, <laughs> but um, it was a very interesting experience and I think it will be a really helpful document. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at uh, where it says next steps on seven, page 17, 
I kind of, you know, I think like the step two is really what I think of a step one. You know, I mean, like you look at, you know, what I'm talking about as the next step, but I have to read the first one a little more because it's glossing right now. Um, but basically, you know, figuring out what goes in what year, you know, like we had three years to do this and then failure is not an option, you know. So that's, I think, maybe where we could spend some time when we get together with the staff. Sounds good. So I am going to um, suggest you, you seem like you have a good handle on this. Maybe you can help me with this part of it then. If indeed, um, and I think it is that um, Sharon's time with us is probably over. Um, I have I have thanked her uh, a lot. <laughs> Let's just say that. But um, maybe I'll send her um, a card or, you know, that maybe we can all sign. I'm not sure how we can do that or something on behalf of the commission. How's that? If we, even if we can't sign, maybe have yeah. some flowers or something. Um, because I think she did, I mean, this was inc incredible in, in that it was just so um, sort of disjointed because of the pandemic, but um, that she was able to pull it off and we now have a working document is, is really uh, to commend them. I thought that, that she and her, her crew did a great job. So we were, we were fortunate to have them. And I know there was, there was a lot of, uh, say I, 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 whatever we paid them, it, they probably should have gotten at least twice that. <laughs> so there's a lot of pro bono work here as well. So I appreciate that. All right. Anything else on the strategic plan for right now? Okay. Okay, quick, quick updates. Um, you have these, I sent them out, so I'll try not, you know, to, uh, but I'll, I'll just kind of run through them quickly. We did have a few sports happen this summer, uh, tennis, track, and golf. All of them were maxed out in terms of enrollment. Uh, so that is boding well for our fall programming for sports. Uh, there's, there's a lot of interest and um, we are finding that we have found ways to be uh, COVID compliant, if you will, and to offer at least clinics at the least and sometimes competitions, depending on what the various sports are. So we will proceed this fall um, with Ultimate. Jim Pristing has um, offered to do a clinic this year, again, or, or a series of clinics for us. Is So that's great. He's going to be working with middle school children uh, specifically, as he has done in the past, and he's very excited to do that. Football, of course, would be non-contact in terms of it would be more of a skills type of a clinic, of course. Uh, cross country could, could involve some competitions as well as skills. Uh, golf, a uh, combination of all of the above, and soccer. Soccer has now entered, for the time being, uh, the realm of uh, sports that are uh, equivalent to, to, to track and tennis and so forth. So they must have had a very strong lobbying group. <laughs> uh, and, but they are required uh, both in baseball. Baseball, yes. Uh, so let me just kind of bring you up to date there. So the, the town health department has um, been meeting and uh, it's pretty specific now under the new, new got the newest guidelines that have come out for soccer and um, baseball that that masks are going to need to be worn by all players. So um, there have been signs posted at the uh, community field and at Mill River outlining all the different COVID regulations. So those are up. Uh, <clears throat> so just be aware that they should be wearing mask at all positions and there are there are a number of other um, restrictions on how many you know people can be that it's catchers and coaches in the dugout other players should be separated along the fence and so forth so it's very specific but that's in that's happening now uh, it's mostly the Kofax league although I understand that there there is another group I just learned today that was using the community field, so I've got to look into that without, and they didn't schedule it. So we've got to kind of keep our eye on that, whether that was just in, you know, just a, a, a team just having a, a kind of player scrimmage or 
practice. I don't know. So we'll look into that. So it is something that, but that we're aware of. Uh, aquatics has been. Well, actually, can I ask you about the fields on, really quick? Sure, please. Um, so seeing as they've had a lot of rest time, they've desperately needed. Do you know the condition of the fields? Well, from my observations, and I'm not a professional by any means, you know, I just have Cherry Hill to compare it to. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the, the A standard. They are actually doing really well. They're getting yeah. a lot of recovery time, obviously, with very, very little play. Uh, they look great. They're letting uh, the DPW, is, of course, let the grass grow a little longer and be, you know, kind of conscientious about that that's sort of an important thing to do that we normally wouldn't be able to do. Right. So uh, they're, they seem to be fairly resilient. Uh, we did have that dry patch, which it didn't help, but yeah. they, were, they also were watering with the, uh, <clears throat> the big water guns yep. during that period, which is good, community <laughs> field in particular. So I think they, they're doing great. And then if we get some more, you know, hopefully this streak of cooler weather and maybe some more rain will help them even more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions on fields, facilities, COVID rules? Well, All right. I, have a, yeah. I have a question. I, I just can't recall. Are there any signs at the fields telling people that, I don't know, under what circumstances you need to reserve it and how to reserve it or what, you know, when you can just come and play if it's sure. free? No. Uh, no, they're not, and there should be. Uh, it's funny that Nick and I were just talking about that today. Um, fields, we should have a sign up that says fields need to be reserved through, these fields need to be reserved, you know, whether it's Mill River or a community field or, or the other places, Plum Brook, um, that those need to reserve, be reserved through us, especially as we're entering uh, the college um, time of the year where the university is back and so forth. But that's a good point, Sarah. I appreciate that. And I, I forgot to mention that, but yes, that just My happened. They're there. having a QR code on the sign that could just take the phone right to huh. information, you know. So if after hours, you know, there's no point in calling, but. I like that. I wonder if we have the, hopefully, well, we'll find out. It's super easy to create a QR code. Oh, it is? Oh, then I'm oh, sure you yeah. can figure it out. She's been able to figure out a lot of this stuff. That I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. Okay. Anything else? Those are good. All right. Uh, the, the, the pools. Pools. Very busy. Busy, busy. And um, <clears throat> we started out with uh, working with the health director and uh, <clears throat> also with the health inspector. We met with you know, various user groups, the Tritons, <clears throat> and so forth, the, our managers. And I think we, we actually developed a really good plan. And uh, we knew going in, though, that it was fluid and that there would be most likely changes made based on, you know, you see it, you know, it looks great on paper, but then reality hits and you realize, oh, this is, this is not going to work. So one of those had to deal with, would do with lap swimming uh, in particular. Uh, we have a, a, robu a robust <laughs> lap swimming program now. I believe we're probably one of the very few, uh, I think maybe now Chicopee has their or, uh, Department of Conservation Recreation that the pool in Chicopee and others are open now, but there was a period where they weren't open. And so we were getting a lot of, a lot of uh, swimmers from out of town. Mm -hmm. And uh, that tended to create a a little bit of a problem just because you know people could reserve their lap swim but um, we were we were saying at the time that if the, for instance if we had two people in the same household they could swim in the same lane well there were other people who felt sort of uncomfortable with that um, being in the lanes adjacent to them so we did some more investigation on what other towns were doing um, outside of Western Mass. And for the most part, most of them that were, were just only <clears throat> doing the, the one person per lane. There were others that were doing every other lane, but our lanes are eight feet wide. And so we did the math and I think we're, we're definitely within the regulations. 
and the requirements. And again, <clears throat> working with the health department and the, the health inspector, uh, we made that little bit of a change. And then we ended up our, adding another hour of lap swim to sort of compensate for the loss of being able to double up in one lane. So we have received overwhelming, um, an overwhelming um, positive um, reaction to what's going on there, both for lap swimming and for open swimming. We have one person on the deck at all times and they're, oh, look at the kitty. <laughs> and they're, <laughs> their job, they're, they are the designated uh, social distancing uh, enforcement. Oh no, geez, where's, where's Lana? <laughs> Bring, a, bring out all our cats. <laughs> I'm sorry, bring your cat to Zoom. <laughs> no, but you, <laughs> I'm not sure that's hysterical. <laughs> I, I think this is like a sea unicorn. The <laughs> sea unicorn. That's great. <laughs> From the world. So that's going really well. So far, so good. You know, we may end up extending the season. We'll see because, you know, obviously we're not going to be able to have a uh, an indoor season this year. And if the weather holds, I think we will have enough staff at least to keep one of the pools open a little bit longer. So I did mention that in my meeting with the town manager and um, we'll look at a budget and see if that's possible. But clearly we're getting a lot of use, uh, but it, it is, I think it's very safe and I feel very uh, confident in um, how we're running that and then it's going really well. But it, it was initially a whew, big challenge. <laughs> So, so that's good. Uh, golf course, golf course is also now. I'll let Yusef speak to this. Is they're packed right now, by the way. Golfer here, uh, but it's um, yeah, it's it, uh, yeah. We're doing ten minute tee times now instead of fifteen minutes, which you know the regulations change. So we were <clears throat> we're able to have more golfers. Uh, we're certainly going to get. Uh, with the university folks arriving, the kids, <clears throat> we're going to get a lot more play. Uh, so we're managing that. And uh, the course, you know, considering not having a lot of rain, I think is in great shape. We were able to bring back two, two part-time seasonals to help out on the course, which uh, has been very beneficial, especially to John. So we've gotten some more things done. Uh, that needed to be done. One person and 64 acres of turf is too much. So uh, he was pretty overwhelmed there for a while. But Yusuf, do you have anything to add to about the golf course? No, it's running pretty smoothly. You know, uh, everybody's respecting the tee times and, you know, only one afternoon we were there and there were people that were jumping on four and five and we kind of like gave them a hard time a little bit. Was, you knew you knew that they were just there trying to jump in between people, so it was delaying everybody else. But other than that, it's been fine. Yeah, yeah. Were they? Did they uh, come in on from Pulpit Hill Road? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah, we've They're tried. Creating, there's even like new parking spaces up there that people have created. <laughs> <laughs> we is. I'm sorry, but Don't is. I Ridge open at all this season or have they shut shut for good? Hickory Ridge <laughs> shut for good. They're shut. Okay. It's quite sad, actually. The uh, practice green at one point when we were really on that hot, hot weather streak without any rain was totally like dark brown. Very sad just to see that, how quickly it uh, reverts to um, just terrible, terrible kind of conditions that I don't know if it could even be brought back as a golf course at this point. I don't know, but I don't, I don't even, and now I don't know what the plan is for Cherry, I mean, for Hickory. Uh, Sarah, did the, the $200,000 though get approved for uh, CPAC? For, didn't that get approved? For Hickory Ridge, that, Hickory. Was the pre, that was the previous cycle. Oh, that was the previous cycle. And it did, and it's been in negotiations, Dave Zomek says, ever since part of the, part of the delay, I think it has to do with the solar installation that mm. either, I, I think it is there already, or I don't know, the getting some there. solar, get it, the, with the solar thing. So I think that's part of what needs to be resolved. But as far as I know, they're still trying to make it happen. Okay. Yeah, that's sort of what I've heard. I just wondered if you know anything else. Um, but yeah, not, not too much, you know, you know, Becky and I live near there. 
and uh, I don't see anything happening there. Becky? They've started um, removing a lot of stuff from the buildings. They brought dumpsters and they're emptying out hmm. the building, which hadn't been done previously. So yeah. Interesting. All right. We shall see. That building looked like it was going to fall down anyway, so. <laughs> Oh wow! Ouch! <laughs> no, there was a there were a lot of holes in the walls outside, like when you're going up the stairs. Yeah, the last, last year we were there, we were just all you know, we we're like pointing at them and stuff. Yeah, it was. They weren't keeping up on the building, that's for sure. The restrooms and the locker rooms were were really in bad shape. But that's true. Um, all right, so we'll be airifying the greens at Cherry Hill on the the tenth, which means that day it's closed and. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what that means, it's basically we're plugging holes in the greens and then we top dress them with um, a, uh, a mixture of, of uh, loam and seed and fertilizer. So that just helps to create uh, an environment that makes the grass stronger uh, and uh, more resilient. So that happens. We try to do that twice a year, uh, but there's because of various different things. Obviously this, this year we weren't able to do it in the spring. Um, so we have actually, because it's uh, about every five years, you wanna go a little deeper and we don't have the equipment for that this year. We're bringing in a professional group to do the, the deep uh, aeration that it needs. So that just strengthens those roots and, and uh, creates a better surface and more long lasting hopefully. So that happens about every five years. So we'll be doing that and closing the course for that day. Uh, <clears throat> all of my full-time staff right now are working various shifts at Cherry Hill. So uh, there is probably a, just one or two, maybe, yeah, one or two slots that are being covered by part-timers in the clubhouse. Uh, but the rest is all done by um, the full-time staff. So questions on Cherry Hill? Uh, it's hard to really tell where we're at. Our first, this is the first month, and the revenues were at twenty nine three one seven. But you know, we weren't. We were doing fifteen minute separations and tea times. Now that we're doing ten, that's more. That is n what the normal kind of rotation is. So we should see that come up. But clearly, we're getting hit with the inability. You know, just don't have the pro shop sales that we normally would w in terms of. Um, you know, anything from golf balls to to shirts and so forth, because people can't really come in and see them. So there's not that, ah, yeah, that, a shirt. Yeah, great, I'll get one. Um, and also beer and wine sales just aren't what they normally are because uh, we're trying to do some things to put more signage up like cold beer and <laughs> so people buy there instead of bring their own in, but we shall see. But, uh, let's see, so, all right. Prime time. <clears throat> Some interesting developments around the after school program. I'd start with by saying that the school is not allowing us to have an after school program. Uh, but that said, and Becky could probably speak to this as well, we're not, you know, we still don't know whether the schools are even going to, you know, be having in in person classes and to what degree if they do. However, they've asked us to provide childcare for their staff as well as town staff uh, at Crocker Farm if they do have in-person classrooms. Uh, in, so there's a lot of unknowns. There's a meeting this Friday. There's the school board meeting was canceled last night uh, because of the weather. <clears throat> and uh, it's gonna happen, I believe on Thursday night instead. So we'll probably have some more answers then. And uh, this is again, a work in progress. This is one of these things we're just kind of rolling with the punches and we'll see what happens. And we'll try to be as helpful as we can um, to, to uh, kind of move this forward if indeed it is a possibility under obviously the COVID-19 uh, restrictions and um, working with our state, um, uh, state of mass rep who oversees our program for licensing, which I've already, who I've already been in contact with. Sarah. Yeah, um, it, th this is, this would be, or will be daycare during the school day. 
Correct. And so aren't those children themselves supposed to be in school somehow? And so is the daycare part helping them do their schools? Most likely this would be children who don't live in the district who are doing remote learning and we would be assisting with their remote learning. Okay. Yeah, normally they would obviously if they're, if they're, you know, I don't know what the percentage of teachers and staff who actually live in Amherst. So we, I don't know. Again, unknown. So will, who has to supply, come up with all the Chromebooks or whatever? Well, each school district has their own protocol. I mean, it then Chromebooks and things like that. So, um, so the kids would bring their own. Children would bring their own, right. Yeah. Any other questions on that? Uh, Becky, did you want to add something? I was going to say the final vote from school committee and which plan they're sending to the state is tomorrow. Um, so that'll set a lot of things in place. Um, depending which phasing model they pick, that'll determine when kids are going back. Um, so we should have a stronger idea by Friday morning. Mm -hmm. what it's going to look like. But I know that um, the district has been collecting information on who needs child care, what districts do they live in kind of thing. So right. they've also been reaching out to um, daycare providers in the area for the younger kids, like the below school age kids, to try and help staff find appropriate placements for their kids. Very good. I mean, it's as, as we know, this is, this is uncharted territory and, you know, it's sort of wait and see and just try to um, be as flexible as possible. And uh, we'll see where we're at. But uh, I will keep you updated as to what happens with that. All right. Any other questions on the after school program or in school program? <laughs> Childcare where will it be barb it would be a crocker because that's our licensed site okay and then there are the other two providers would also be providing child care at their sites which i think is interesting but ours would be larger because we would also have the town staff children if they needed child care is there like a cap on um, number of kids per room or there is per teacher. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there's a whole set of really strict guidelines. And so I can't what is the what is the that. maximum number of kids that could be in this program? Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking around thirty based on our square footage. It could be less. Do you know what the hours of operation will be? It would be probably um well, before work starts, it's eight up, so probably like 7.45 to 4.45, something like that. They're changing the school hours and not requiring staff to be on uh, site mm -hmm. until half an hour before students would arrive. Right. So those are, yeah, it was on uh, the schools, I believe, or, the elementary schools aren't even going to start until like 9:45 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but but that but the 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 town staff starts at eight, so it's ah. half them. So there's the. So we My would. Cats are wrestling, by the way. Do you know how many kids there are? How many towns? <laughs> no, no, we haven't surveyed. We're waiting and and seeing at this yeah. point we're kind of like okay and then we'll figure it out but uh yeah then we'll do what the schools did and get a quick uh grip on how many people we might anticipate serving all right adult and, and youth education we are currently offering a the key chijong class outdoors outside behind the library that's that has been well received and so we're looking at other programs this fall that we'll be able to offer on, uh, in the out of doors. Uh, and uh, I think that's gonna, that's coming together. Uh, more fitness programs, things like yoga and other 
you know, like I, I think the examples here, mountain biking, geocaching, and so forth. So for youth and adult ed, we'll, um, we'll look outdoors. Now, special events are a whole nother, I met with Nikki today, and, uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about Halloween, and we're, we're looking at ways we can collaborate with the chamber and the bid to just kind of change up what we've done in the past. Obviously, we couldn't do an indoor carnival. A parade is out of the question, but there are other, you know, we're looking around at what other towns are doing and um, going to put our heads together and, and come up with some sort of a program for the Halloween um, season or day or I'm not sure what we'll call it, but so we're working on that. And the same with Winterfest. We're already thinking in terms of, gee, what, how, how will that look and and what what could we be doing? Uh, outreach and summer camps. Well, obviously, no summer camps. But we've been very busy with our, well, I shouldn't say no summer camps because we did an art in a camp bag, which was really um, a great little program. And we were able to distribute to about 80 low-income families. So lots of activities in, in the bag that were they uh, basically paired with programming through online kind of contact. So it was cool. And Nikki did that. Um, we also did the some nature kits that we put together, the little bug kits and so forth. The kids could go around and um, collect their specimens. And then there were program components to that as well. And that we did at uh, two different housing areas, as well as at Puffer's Pond and people just love those. Uh, we also did a scavenger hunt at Puffer's Pond and um, on two consecutive Wednesdays in July, and that was really well received. And we'll, we'll be doing some programming at Groff Park once that spray park finally opens. So let me, um, oh, well, we'll get to that, so what the status is. Uh, strategic planning we've covered, software and web pages, uh, let's see. We're still updating. Um, we did have an issue with our rec track, so we're going to have to get an updated version. It looks like so that we'll so we'll we'll actually be moving <laughs> very quickly on that objective uh, because they're no longer going to service us <laughs> if we don't upgrade. So okay. IT is involved in that and is working with Marion and Donna to um, work on those upgrades. Uh, we won't, and as I said, we won't be doing a paper brochure, but we'll be advertising about how to redirect people to our website um, around our offerings for the fall. And um, Groff, any questions so far on any of this? Okay, Groff Park. Uh, latest update is that the part was supposed to come in this week, and then it was going to be tested next week, and then hopefully open the following week or maybe even next week. So I'm crossing my fingers that all of that fell into place. I don't know. I don't have a, a definite answer and I haven't, I tried to get a hold of Guilford before the meeting and, uh, but I didn't hear back from him. So uh, once it is open though, we will have an attendant there. It'll be one of, it won't be a light, you know, they're not lifeguarding, but there'll be an attendant. They'll be clearly marked as employees and well, their, their main responsibility is uh, enforcing social distancing. Question, yeah, Sarah. Is there, <clears throat> do kids have to wear masks when they're running around in the water spray? No, because the water yeah. makes the mask ineffective. Right. So it's more of, you know, practice. That's why you have the social distancing attendant. Right. Are we gonna have people sign waivers? We won't be signing waivers, but we will be doing this just like we do at the pools. We we take we have a social contacting protocol where people have to come in. They the f one family member provides their name and their phone number. Hmm. Is it going to be and the guards that are going to do that, or is it going to be other people? No, it'll be one of the rotations for the lifeguards. Hmm. The There'll yep. be an attendant and a lifeguard, or the attendant is. Yeah, it just happens to be a lifeguard. So one person, right? An employee, right? And then another question. Um, I know the the slide that's going downhill. Yeah. 
there, there's there are plans to put a fence there. Mm -hmm. That grass is getting pretty torn up. Is it really? It's all dirt. I, we went there with my girls the first day. It was great. We went last week. It's it's getting torn up. Mm, that's too bad. And you're talking about the grass that's on the sides of the on the side. Yeah, so it's a slide, and then there's some rubbery stuff crawling up. And then yeah, because the kids instead of going up the rubbery stuff, rather like so. My understanding is the that grass be and pull sort of, it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm. Well, of course. Uh, yeah, that makes it's sense. It's to tear up the grass, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Eventually, what my understanding is, and correct me if anyone knows differently, but what I was told is that there will be like a sort of like a climbing wall installed there. That'd be great. So it'll be more of a synthetic uh, soft surface again. That was my understanding as well. Yeah. As part of this plan, as part of this park, as part of that slide area, it was it's a but, lot. It was a steeper grade than we anticipated mm. by far. Uh, I we I actually. I was under the understanding that, that 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 would be filled and it wouldn't be as steep a grade as it is. That slide's fairly steep. So, you know, kids obviously are just grabbing onto the grass to get up. And then again, and plus their shoes and everything, just climbing up is going to tear it yeah, apart. It up. Yeah. So yeah, that's why there had to be some sort of a barrier or, and then we think like we would just put a little hole that the kids could climb through after they screwed up the climbing wall or something to that effect. I'm not sure where we're at where dpw they were going to put that in but um i'm not sure where they're at with that it was also hard like becky and yusuf and i all went down the slide of the, at the opening <laughs> was it fast? which is fun um we wrote a lot of the we we used a lot of the playground that day but <laughs> yeah you did <laughs> um but it was hard to get back up that hill got that it, yeah, yeah, it's pretty it's funny. I had a comment after the pictures were posted on the town website. There, it was like, well, why weren't there any children there? And then I had to explain, well, it was a low key opening. And well, it seems like the adults were having a good time. I said, well, <laughs> oh, it was kind of funny. Um, all righty. Uh, so, um, just, sorry, one more question about the spray park. Is that, um, so at some point will open hopefully and is when will that close though is that going to close at the same time the pools do or is that going to go until it's kind of too cold i think i think it'll go until it's too cold yeah at this point just because it's opening so late right yeah so my guess is toward the end of september well, I, I hope it, I know you post it there, uh, the it might open mid-August. I hope so, because the season is... I know, we're just like... I, and the, I know this part was supposed to like open a long time ago, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then what are the hours? Like, when is the spray park spraying? Is it like all the, you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be wow. something like okay. uh, till dusk. I mean, so that, you know, not quite to dusk, but... To that, yeah, when okay. probably eight to I, I feel like a lot of push the buttons, you know, so it's not like constantly mm -hmm. running. I feel like the spray park area should also have another sign with its own rules. I don't know, uh, would it have like the date and times hmm. and who to contact if something happens, if something's broken? Because I know when you enter the main park, there's a COVID warning and a bunch of rules, then the spray park area should probably have some too. Say no mask required. Please remain so, social distance because no masks are required. Yeah. Don't uh, hang on the. Don't hang on don't the. Hang on that. <laughs> don't push other kids. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious, but. <laughs> no, that's good. Those are good points. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'll I'll make sure that happens. Yeah, another signage. Yeah, more signage. There will be a kiosk as well, so that, that hasn't been installed. Well. Maybe like some separation too, because I do see kids wearing masks in the park area mm -hmm. once the spray park opens, which is great. I mean, seeing a bunch of little kids actually being able to wear masks playing around is um, great. But yeah, once the spray park opens, I feel like there should be some division there. It's like a gate or something like, now I'm going to go to the spray park Take off my mask. Sign a little. And put yeah, and put it where right. Masks yeah. all over the place. 
Yeah, no, if a parent would hold it, I would assume. You Barb, I, I was yeah. thinking about how you said there would be no paper brochure this fall. Mm -hmm. And then step or somebody just mentioned a kiosk. I think it would be great if there could be some printouts posted publicly of what the programming is going to be because maybe everybody has a cell phone, you know, everybody's totally connected, but maybe not. Or maybe there are people from out of town who would see it, mm -hmm. but no, that's, I think we actually are intending that. I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. We'll have okay. something that's going to be part of the advertising that'll lift like the program, but it won't be the booklet, the traditional booklet, right. just because okay. it's so fluid and last minute. <laughs> right. I think, you know, because we're so up against whatever the newest guideline is. Right. So it's what we can offer. But yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And we'll get something. Thank you. Those are both good points. Thank you so much. Um, we'll work on those. So again, I just want to thank my staff and just point out that they're, they're still, you know, they're working at Puffer's Pond. I don't know if any of you have been there. Yeah. So did, Seth and Victor. Um, they but, are all there smiling away. It's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's been a great, I think a great thing, actually. Um, I, yeah, I've appreciated having like the, the parking attendant at the beginning um, of, of State Street and then having the people at the entrance of the pond and having only the one entrance of the pond. Um, and it really, it's, it's so much nicer around. I'm sure you, Seth, can attest to this as well, but it's just such a, it's a much nicer place so I like the umbrella. Walk around Not the umbrella. The the hula hoop on the, the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I, I loved it. And everyone was kind of in their own little Ooh. space, nicely yeah. spaced <laughs> out. Didn't give me anxiety, you know, like everyone, you know. Right. So that's, funny, I, that's such a funny point they bring that up because at first I was like, hula hoops. Like <laughs> and it's like that's so Amherst. It's perfect. I love <laughs> it. Hula hoop. That doesn't seem you know, to hurt. I, my first worry was, oh, the kids are going to move. And I'm like, ah, they did, so what? And then, you know, the parents still were, and the family groups were still in one place. And so let the kids play with them. It was fine. We've lost <laughs> a few, but we've been able to replace them. And so it's, it hasn't been a big deal. Yeah, I think it's been uh, extremely well received and um, sort of like the pools. People feel safe. They feel, gee, there's some, there's a little more order to it, but not too much that it's infringing on the kind of swimming hole environment that they like. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely up. cleaner as well. Yes. Much cleaner. Mm -hmm. Definitely so, appreciate that. So is this something that might continue even after it isn't absolutely required? I think it's probably it's at some point, yes. In, in some kind of, not some point, but some, some sort of rendition of what we're doing now. Yeah. I, I think it's just been so successful and so well received. And and that and the, the point that someone made about just there's there's a main, you know, you, you drive in, it's one way. Mm -hmm. Parking's so much easier now. Uh, you know, I, I think it was it was really unsafe, I think, before with two directionals, people mm -hmm. coming in and out of cars and so forth. Now the real test will be in a week or so when the students come back mm -hmm. to see, uh, you know, how how we um how, how they do with their social distancing. And, and so we have had a couple parties there. We've had still people, you know, Meg contact me this weekend and we had people on the dam. Oh yes, and, and jumping off the cliff. cliff. And jump but the water is low as it is. I'm like, there's no water coming it's over the great. dam. They're still up there jumping like, oh. <laughs> I, I drove by today and it looked like a mom was sitting on the dam and the kid was running on it. I'm like. Oh my God. <laughs> Well, yeah, and I had text Barb, and I was out, like, walking the dogs. I typically walk daily with them um, up Pulp the Hill and around the pond and back, my, like, two-mile loop. And um, I was down there, and I was walking by, and the parking attendant was down there, and just, I think he was sitting, like, on the hood of his car at that point or something. But it, over the dam, there was, like, ten people sitting on the dam. <laughs> And then I come around the corner and could see the boulder and there's like six, seven kids up there and then kids down below and then the kids in the car standing outside of the car right behind the parking attendant like cheering those kids on to jump and I was like oh my gosh so I'm texting Barbara I'm like 
the parking attendant supposed to do anything about this stuff? Like, <laughs> I was in charge here with this part. Yeah, um, that part's, you know, the whole thing actually is run by conservation. So it's a conservation yeah. issue. Um, I did make Dave aware of, you know, it's, there's still that issue and who, who is responsible or is anyone responsible? Right. And it, and it still doesn't seem very clear. Yeah. It definitely see, I mean, like normally if the water is at its normal level, like, yeah, it's an issue, but with it this low, mm -hmm. like I've jumped off those rocks like 20, 30 years ago or whatever it was, but you know, it's like, I know that there's other rocks down below that, <clears throat> you know, when the water's low, it's not the safest thing to do. Yeah, no, it isn't. I agree. And they, there was a near drowning there. I don't know if people, they kind of kept it on the QT, but there was this year, early in the year, there was mm -hmm. a near drowning there. Fortunately, there was a doctor and his wife was a nurse, I believe, and they were able to resuscitate the kid wow. and uh, get him and then he was transported. But So that's still happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it seems to need to be, you know, I think, you know, vigilant and do whatever, but, you know, it's good to have these there personnel there all the time. So that's a good thing. And again, it's been extremely well received. So they're working, you know, between the senior center, Puffer's Pond, um, helping with town hall duties in terms of taking minutes for various committees on Zoom and working with the IT department. Everyone's keeping fairly busy uh, and we'll probably be helping out in other areas as we, you know, move through the fall. Uh, we've got the election coming up and there's still some discussion as to whether there's going to be the normal number of polling places or one polling place this year. It kind of went back and forth. So on that, I guess, at the last uh, town council meeting. So <clears throat> regardless, though, there's there's been a, uh, a big upswing in uh, mail-in ballots. So they're going to need help opening, counting, uh, all of that goes along with that. I've helped with that process before and it's, it's, it's uh it's quite, it's, it's very time consuming and it requires a lot of people. So we'll be helping with that as well for the next, the two elections that are coming up. All right. So I think that is all I have. Uh, any comments or um, concerns, questions? Okay. If not, then we let's, I think we should continue now that we're able to, to meet monthly again get back into our regular routine. So uh, September dates, any, uh, is this a good week for people in terms of this being the, where are we at? First week of the September. Does that work for folks? Well, you'll be counting ballots the first, you know. Oh, that's probably not. Maybe we should do it the second week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, second week looks good. Yeah, second week, the week of the sixth. So that would be seventh is Labor Day. I don't know if that even matters anymore. And but how about Wednesday the ninth? That gives us a day break. It'll be Wednesday. Yeah. Sure. Wednesday the ninth at six o'clock. Is this a good time? Yep. Sure. And uh, I think I've. Uh, this is just an aside, but I did hear from somebody about. And I just told, and I apologize. I've totally lost it. But someone had a recommendation for an individual who might be interested in joining the commission. Do you remember who that was? Was it one of you? No. I remember okay. you mentioning someone. Yeah, I did too. And I so long ago that <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten. So uh, if you know of anyone, we still have the one vacancy. We'd love to have them. So let me know, and uh, I'll also put that out to staff as well. Maybe it was a staff member. Hmm. Who knew someone? I'll double check. Now that we're back to hopefully our regular routine. Okay, if there's nothing else, we have a date. Did I forget anything, Meg? When do we want? You. When do we want to schedule the staff and commission? Yeah. yeah. Um, why don't we wait? I know, I know that I'll be gone for a week in, in August, at the end of August, and I think other people are taking vacations. I know my staff is. 
So let's, why don't we schedule that after yeah. our commission meeting in September? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And I'll check in with the staff, but maybe I would be soon after that. Maybe you'll know more about your move, which I'm sure would slow, no. every, slow everything down a bit. Yeah. 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 We should. No, we will. We'll, we'll hopefully know more. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. It was good to what, see everybody. So, it was good to see everyone. Thank you all for coming. Bye, everyone. Enjoy Bye. the beautiful evening. Yeah. Thank you, you too. All right. Bye. So take good care of your kitties too. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye. Along, Bye. everyone. <laughs>